At this meeting, we presented the quality of life data on our Alaparib trial, uh, study 19 trial, which is a maintenance trial of Alaparib or placebo uh, in patients with platinum sensitive uh, ovarian cancer. And we concentrated particularly on the group of women in that trial who had a BRCA mutation, which was about 50% of the patients enrolled in that study. So the, the real purpose of this quality of life study was to see whether prolonged maintenance therapy with Alaparib had any detrimental effect on the quality of life of these patients. And we were pleased to report that it did not have a detrimental effect. And some of these patients, of course, are on the drug for a very long time, uh, some several years, uh, which is uh, fantastic, really, for a, a new drug like this in, in oncology. Uh, so it's really important that we, we understand as closely as we can uh, how the long-term therapies do affect women uh, taking maintenance therapies. PARP inhibitors are a completely new class of drugs uh, in, in oncology and they are particularly active in patients with a BRCA mutation and particularly in, in ovarian cancer, although they're also very active in patients with high-grade serous ovarian cancer, the commonest type of ovarian cancer, even without a BRCA mutation. So the trial was designed really to see whether we could extend the progression-free survival of women with high-grade serous ovarian cancer who'd relapsed but responded to the next line of platinum therapy. And we know that many of these patients will respond, but unfortunately within a few months the disease will return again. So what we did was to randomize a group of women after the completion of chemotherapy, either to a lap rib or to placebo, and measure the time to disease progression. And within that group uh, of women, it turned out retrospectively that half of them had a BRCA mutation and the, the other half were wild type uh, for the BRCA gene. And the trial showed that in both groups, but in particular in those with a BRCA mutation, there was a highly significant prolongation of the progression-free survival in favour of the patients taking a laparin. I think for patients who have a BRCA mutation, and that is now being recognised to be a higher percentage of women than we previously believed, and that's probably because family history taking isn't alone good enough to, to select those patients with a mutation. So we think that probably around about 20% of women with high-grade ovarian cancer have a, either a BRCA mutation, inherited mutation, or a defect in the BRCA gene, and therefore may benefit from PARP inhibitors such as Alaparib. Uh, so what we've seen in terms of the clinical value is not only this significant prolongation in, in that gr group of women, uh, which could delay uh, the next line of treatment, there is a trend towards an improvement of overall survival, but the data are not yet sufficiently mature. But even within those women, there is a cohort, which we don't fully understand yet, who are what we call now super responders, who are on the drug literally for years. Now this is something that's just unheard of in recurrent ovarian cancer. Uh, you know, the response typically lasts about 10 to 12 months and then the patient recurs. But a number of these patients on this trial have actually been on the drug two, three, four, and more years. So we're looking at these patients more closely to try and understand better why they are so super sensitive to Alaparib. But I think that going forward, uh, this drug and this class of drugs is certainly going to become established in the treatment of patients with BRCA mutation ovarian cancer. Uh, I think it will eventually get expanded to that larger group of patients who do not have a mutation, but yet seem to have this uh, phenotype that we call homologous recombination deficiency. They have defects in the repair mechanisms of their DNA, which makes them susceptible to PARP inhibitors. And that may actually include up to 50% of all women with high-grade serous ovarian cancer. We still haven't uh, finished by any means all the work with antiangiogenic agents in ovarian cancer. And uh, last year at the European Cancer Conference I presented the work on sidirinib in ovarian cancer and this is a highly active drug uh, and is now actually being looked at in combination 
uh, with Alaprib and there were results presented at the ASCO meeting uh, this summer uh, that showed that that combination is, is very active and that going forward will I think be something to explore. The other thing that we need to look at with antiangiogenic agents is where best in the pathway of care should we be using these drugs and of course there are different types of antiangiogenic agents and we need to know which ones to use when. So I think uh, going forward in the next three or four years we're going to see a lot more work not only with PARP inhibitors but with antiangiogenic agents. If we look over the horizon uh, because we don't really have much data yet but it's just beginning to emerge. I think what we're going to see in ovarian cancer are a number of studies with immunomodulatory drugs, particularly the checkpoint inhibitors, that have been so fantastic in, in what we've seen so far in melanoma and lung cancer and, and other tumours emerging. I think there's a very good reason to believe that those drugs will be active in ovarian cancer and I'm sure that we will see clinical trials uh, in that disease.